Okay, so um, again, to stay organized, I usually find this helpful. I'll keep this in my margin. There's no reflections here. There's no negative signs to deal with. So nothing happens at that point. Um, there is a vertical stretch factor of 2 and a horizontal stretch factor of 4. Um, no compressions happen. And it looks like I'm going to move 2 to the right and 3 up. Okay, so you have to be able to take the math and turn it into English, just like I did there. And... Uh, Once you've done that, then you can apply it in that series. So for example, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to, uh, there's no reflection, so we're going to start here. So the point 3 to negative 7, if I expand vertically by 2 and horizontally by 4, this is the next spot where I find the point. If I move 2 to the right and 3 up, then I should be at 14, negative 11. So I'll let you try the next one, see where you come up with. Same idea, see if you can turn the math into English, then once you've done that, map that point. Sorry, I'll leave it here just in case anyone needs to copy part of it. Okay, so... Uh, the first thing you should do here, what's the first piece of advice you'd give someone before they start anything here? Come on, somebody use the F word. Factor, that's the F word I'm looking for. So first thing you should do before you start looking at translations and reflections and all that other good stuff is you should factor. Otherwise, you may not catch exactly what's happened. Because if you think about what's happened in this case, if it says you're moving 4 to the right, but you had to reflect it, if you move 4 to the right, where is your reflection in a mirror moving? It's actually moving 4 to the left, right? As you move further from the mirror, the person in the mirror moves farther in the opposite direction. So that's why it kind of doesn't look the way it should until you factor it. So R-E-C-T, there is a y-axis reflection. Um, I have a vertical compression, so it would be VSF equals one half, and I move four left and one up. So this point will go from five two to negative five two. Then it will go negative five one and negative nine. Have you finished, have you finished uh, part C? Can I just see? Finish part C? Okay, we'll do that one then as well. Great. So you should have factored this one as well to start with. So if I take out a quarter, this will be x plus 8 minus 5. Now it's easier for me to talk about the transformations that happen. So are there any reflections in this transformation? Sure, Danny, why not? Go for it. X-axis is correct. This negative sign here, that affects the y-coordinate, so it's going to jump above and below the y-axis, or sorry, the x-axis. Okay, any expansions to talk about? Ning. So the only thing left we have to talk about is translations. So James, can you tell me the translations on this graph? Yep. That's five down. So when we take that point, negative two six, on the first step, I reflect in the x-axis. So that's going to jump the y-coordinate across. Then if I have a vertical stretch by 3 and a horizontal by 4, sorry, 
wait, that should be a... Oh no, that's correct. Negative eight, eight, negative 18. Okay, and then the last one, if I move eight to the left, I'll be at negative 16, and five down will be at negative 23. Okay, so let's try some graphs. Our first graph here, um, I'm just going to get you started, but I'll let you do it. Um, pick some points. So these would be the points that I would choose. You could pick more or possibly less if you're a good artist. And then the way I set this one up is the same as I've already been doing. And I'll show you why it's a good, uh, a good technique later when we uh, discuss it. But I'm going to do it like this. I'm actually going to write down what's happened to the graph. And I'm going to make a little table for it. So are there any reflections in this transformation? Nope. So we don't need to do anything in the first step. So I can just put a line at this part. Any expansions in this graph? Any expansions? Myron, you look like you know what's going on. Good, it's that simple. See, sometimes when you're a teacher, you don't know if everyone's totally lost or totally bored. If you're totally bored, you can end that boredom quickly by helping me out. Okay, so if uh, I end up getting some responses, then I know that people are, are clicked into this and they understand. If I don't get responses, I can't be sure. So, uh... The final thing that's happened here, what's the translations? Right one, up one. Okay, so that will be the final right one, up one. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do to help keep me organized. I'll take the points. So the first point was... Uh, negative 2, 0, which is this one right there. And I'm going to list them all. Uh, the next one I'll do is negative 1, negative 1, then 0, 0, then 1, 1, and finally, uh, what's that going to be? 2, 0. So, this is the table that I was referring to. I'm going to apply one step of the table at a time to each point. It's easier to think that way because then you do the same thing to each point. So there's no reflection. So I would just go like this and say, don't worry, there's no reflections. Okay. Expansions. Well, I have in my work here vertically by 2, horizontally by 2. So I'm going to do that to each point. So that will be negative 4, 0, um, negative 2, negative 2. 0, 0, 2, 2, and 4, 0. Okay. So it's easy to do that transformation five times in a row because you remember from the first point you did what, you, what your process was, just times by 2 in this case. There's no compression, so I would go like this. Don't worry about compressions. But then the last thing I'm going to do is each of these points now need to be moved one to the right and one up. So one to the right, one up. One to the right and one up. One to the right, one up. One to the right, one up. And one to the right, one up. So here's my final points. If I plot these, that gives me the, the uh, final graph. So at negative 3, 1, uh, in that, this spot here. At negative 1, negative 1. Then 1, 1. 3, 3, so I have to move the screen up a little bit. So 3, 3 is here, and 5, 1, which is there. So this would be the transformed graph. Not bad. Okay, so the graph should be twice as wide, twice as tall, moved to the right one, moved up one. So if you just do that sequence one step at a time, it's easy to manage. The other thing that's nice about doing the table is, for example, let's just say that this point ended up here and my graph looked like this when I was done. Okay, You would know by looking at it that you made a mistake. 
And if you know you've made a mistake there, then you can say, well, this point used to be this point, so why don't I go see where I made my mistake? Here's that point in the table. I can check. Did I make a mistake here? No. Did I make, oh, there's my mistake. It's easy to find your work again when you do make a mistake. Okay, so anyways, uh, I recommend that you work that way when you're doing combinations. Use a table to keep yourself organized. Okay, so your turn. Do the full transformation of this uh, gap jump, skateboard jump, snowboard jump, whatever you want to call it. So just a reminder, before you start that process, have everything in standard form. The reason we use that standard form, it's easier to tell which uh, directions and stretches and things have happened to the graph. So uh, the points again, which we were working on, I would pick these points right here, here, and here. So I'm going to work out my table and figure out where the points go. So R, C, oops, pause. Okay, so look at where we were at. So in this graph, uh, there's a reflection on the y-axis. It's going to move the graph one to the right and two up. Uh, so the points that I had started with, um, the first one was at negative three, negative two. Then the next point was at uh, negative one, two. Finally, at three zero. So if I move these points, reflections, everybody has to be flipped in the y axis. So that means I'm going to change the x coordinate. Um, no expansions to worry about. Compressions here by a half. This will be three, negative one, 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 zero, half, negative two, one half, and negative three, zero. And finally, you got to move one to the right and two up. So one to the right will be at four, two up will be at one, one to the right. So I'm going to plot my points like I did before. So 4, 1. That's now 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 there. 2, 3, which is uh, a little bit up off the screen. Or is it 2, 3 or 2? Yeah, 2, 3. So at 2 and 3. And 1, 2 and a half, negative 1, 2 and a half, and then negative 2, 2. So that'll be one, two and a half, negative one, two and a half, and what was the last point? Negative two, two. Okay, so negative two, positive two. So this is a graph which is half the height, reflected, move one to the right and two up. Can I just see by show of hands how many people were able to do that? You got the right graph or same graph as me? Okay, okay we're gonna keep practicing. So, uh, the next skill we're going to work on here in class is, is describing a transformation. So, we're going to try and figure out how we go from the left graph to the right graph. 